America's Independence Day is celebrated across the country with fireworks, hot weather, pool parties, and barbecues. For the thousands that gather on Coney Island in America's largest metropolitan city, New York City, July 4th is commemorated with another annual tradition, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Beginning in 1916, the Hot Dog Eating Contest has become the de facto Olympics for the sport of competitive eating. So how and why did competitive eating become so popular? And what is the history behind this gluttonous sport? Sport. Well, the beginnings of competitive eating can be traced back to Thor and Loki. While the pair are part of the Marvel Universe, they are, of course, actually Nordic gods and not brothers. Many tales were told of these two's travels, but the story that applies here is the one where they paid a visit to the court of the giant king Utgard Loki, meaning Loki of the Outyards and a different Loki than Thor's pal. As told in the Prose Edda, a compilation of myths from 13th century Iceland, Thor, Loki, and their other travel companion, Thialfi, arrive at the humongous palace of the giant king Utgard Loki, ironically after another run-in with a giant by the name of Skirimir. Utgard then challenges each visitor to a competition. Thialfi picks athletics but loses a foot race to Hugi, which actually means thought in Old Norse, and thought is always faster than physical speed, of course. Thor is challenged to three events, failing at each one. One of the events was attempting to drink the contents of a horn anchored into the sea, rendering the task impossible. Loki declares his own competition by making the proclamation that he could eat faster than anyone. Utgard takes up the challenge and sets himself against Loki. Standing at opposite sides of the table with a wooden plate full of meat in the middle, they take off chowing. Utgard takes him up on the challenge and sets him against Loki. Sitting at opposite sides of the table with a wooden plate full of meat in the middle, they take off eating. Upon meeting in the middle, Loki has eaten all of his meat, but Loki has not only eaten all of the meat, but the bones and the wooden plate as well. Loki is declared the winner, and only later did the Nordic gods realize that Loki, meaning fire in Old Norse, was the most voracious of all the elements. Either way, the mythical match between Loki and Logi was the first record of a competitive eating contest in recorded history. There is little other evidence of such eating competitions in early history. While overindulgence was a pastime of the Romans and Middle Age English monarchs, it seems the competitive eating contests we've come to know and love today started with the great American tradition of pie eating. While it isn't known exactly when the first pie eating contest took place, it seems to have been a staple of state fairs in the latter half of the 19th century. By the turn of the century, pie-eating contests became a symbol of Americana and were engaged in across the country. During World War I, American regiments pitted their soldiers against one another in this act of gluttony as a way to boost morale and, as one can only assume, for betting purposes. In fact, these contests, or any contests for that matter, were in clear defiance of the National Defense Act signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson on June 3, 1916. It reads, Enlisted men, army bands, and members thereof are forbidden from from engaging in any competitive civilian employment. From pies, competitive eating grew to incorporate all sorts of food and participants, including a 1919 spaghetti eating contest between a New York Yankee, Ping Bodhi, and an ostrich named Percy. The contest took place on April 3, 1919. In it, given Bodhi was the challenger, he was allowed to pick his choice of food. His choice? Spaghetti. Percy raised no objection, though members of the Chamber of Commerce who had wagered heavily on Percy did not like this pick. After the first three bowls, man and ostrich were neck and neck. It was said that Percy gobbled his third bowl of spaghetti with such gusto that he apparently swallowed the manager's pocket watch and chain while the manager was timing him. By the fourth bowl, Percy's sides had begun to swell visibly. At the sixth bowl, several female spectators headed for the exit, not wanting to see what would happen to the poor bird. By the eighth bowl, it was becoming clear that Bodhi was going to win the battle. But still, the bird kept on going. During the tenth bowl of spaghetti, a spectator supposedly yelled, Do you want your bird killed? Finally, as Percy ate his eleventh bowl of pasta, he stopped eating, staggered off, and collapsed. Bodhi finished his bowl, emerging the victor, supposedly stating, When the timekeeper counted to ten, the ostrich keeled over, never to rise again. The ostrich supposedly died. Of course, whether that's exactly what really happened, or that the victory was slightly embellished by those covering the event for effect is up for debate. 
For instance, we're guessing Percy didn't actually eat the manager's watch, and it seems odd that the ostrich would choose to eat itself to death rather than just stop when it was full up. But an ostrich staggering away and keeling over does make for a better story than one that just stops eating when it's full. For reference, ostriches typically eat about eight pounds of food per day, processing it in their three stomachs, including a gizzard, which seemingly would have little trouble grinding up pasta. Their gizzard can hold at any given time about two to four pounds, nearly half of which is generally rocks and sand used for grinding the food. They also aren't super picky about what they eat, consuming plants, seeds, roots, insects, and even small animals. Pretty much whatever plant or animal they can fit in their gullet, they may try to eat if they are so inclined. Whether the ostrich actually died from the event or not, reports all agree that Bodhi won. Possibly more to do with lack of competitive spirit in the ostrich than Bodhi's stomach holding more than the ostrich's. But perhaps the massive amount of pasta didn't really agree with Percy's digestive system in some severe way. Given ostriches eat grains just fine, this seems unlikely though. If there are any ostrich experts out there, well, this is what you're trained for. It's your moment to shine. Please ring in in the comment section below. So moving back to general competitive eating contests, it's hot dogs that have triggered the modern day competitive eating craze. There have been several individuals who claim to be the first to put a hot sausage in a bun. However, bread and sausages have been around for thousands of years, so one would think that no modern claimant was really the first. Nevertheless, one of the claimants was German immigrant and Coney Island resident Charles Feltman. By the late 1860s, Coney Island had already become a popular tourist destination, albeit with a bit of a rougher crowd with all of its bathhouses and saloons. Feldman began his salesman career in 1867 by selling pies out of a wagon. According to the legend, that same year, looking to diversify his wares, he put one of his beloved German frankfurters on a roll to prevent him needing to give customers plates and silverware. The general theme among the claimants to this bun idea was pretty much the same, and most were also German immigrants like Feldman. It's said that he sold nearly 4,000 of his frankfurters that summer. They wouldn't be called hot dogs until a couple of decades later, by the way. Whether he actually invented the idea or not, not, within four years, sausages in a bun would provide Feltman the funds to lease a plot of land on Coney Island that eventually led him to overseeing a small empire with nine restaurants, two bars, a beer garden, a ballroom, a hotel, an outdoor movie theater, a carousel, and a roller coaster. In 1916, one of Feltman's employees was challenged by two of his co-workers to start his own business. So Nathan Handwerker did just that. He opened his own hot dog stands on the corner of Surf and Stillwell Avenue. Spiced with his wife Ida's special garlic recipe, these dogs sold for a nickel, about $1.05 today. Feltman's dogs were being sold for a dime. Not only that, Nathan had a flair for promotion. For instance, he invited interns from Coney Island Hospital dressed in their white scrubs to draw attention, or, as some have speculated, just homeless men that he paid to dress in white in exchange for free hot dogs. That wasn't the only way Nathan promoted his hot dogs. That same summer of 1916, on July the 4th, Nathan decided to hold a contest in the same vein of the sideshows that dotted the island. Four tough immigrant men competed in the very first Nathan's hot dog eating contest at noon on Independence Day. They were given 12 minutes to eat as many hot dogs and buns as they could. To this day, the format has remained exactly the same. Legend states that Jim Mullen, a Brooklyn construction worker, won the contest by eating 10 hot dogs and buns in 12 minutes. It was said he told Nathan afterwards that he would have been able to eat more if the buns weren't so stale. Whether that's perfectly accurate or not, from 1916 to the mid-1990s, Nathan's hot dog eating contest went on every year, save for 1944, due to the war, and it happened in front of hundreds of spectators. But brothers George and Rich Shea changed all of that. George, the older one, had worked for a public relations firm that had the Nathan's hot dog accounts and was in charge of the contest. Through the 80s and 90s, that mostly consisted of gathering a few heavyset gentlemen and letting them have at it in front of 100 or 200 spectators. In 1997, the Share brothers created the International Federation of Competitive Eating as little more than a sideshow or joke. They soon realized there was demand for this sort of thing and expanded it beyond hot dogs to fries, crab cakes, asparagus, cheesesteaks, buffalo wings, sweet corn, oysters, pepperoni rolls, and so forth. Today, there are 80 to 100 competitions per year overseen by what is now called Major League Eating. And these contests, well, they are not a joke anymore. The Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest hit a critical mass in 2001 thanks to the record-breaking antics of Takeru Kobayashi. 
Upon arriving on the scene in 2001 from Japan, the only other place in the world that competitive eating is as big as it is in the United States, Kobayashi became the face, or more accurately, the mouth, of competitive eating. In his first competition, he doubled the record of 25 hot dogs by eating 50. He's gone on to break his own record a few times, not to mention set competitive eating records with foods ranging from hamburgers to Twinkies to cow brains. Due to Kobayashi's feats of gastro strength, not to mention several other competitors like Joey Chestnut and Sonya at the Black Widow Thomas, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest has been broadcast on ESPN since 2004 and attracts many thousands of people every July 4th to Coney Island, the supposed birthplace of hot dogs in a bun and competitive eating competitions. And now for a bonus fact. As an example of the amazing feats of ingestion some of the top competitive eaters in the world can achieve, we have the case of the amazing Molly Schuler, a dainty 5 foot 7 inch, 125 pound woman. For starters, after a friend told her she could never finish a Stellinator, a burger with six each of patties, eggs, and cheese, 12 pieces of bacon, and a variety of toppings, including peanut butter and jalapenos, served at Stella's Bar and Grill in Bellevue, Nebraska, Molly downed the monstrosity in 15 minutes in August of 2012, and a star was born. Her next food feat happened in September of 2012, when she became the first woman to even try and consume the five-pound hamburger topped with ten slices of cheese, lettuce, tomato, and onion, along with the one-pound side of french fries that make up sinful burger sports grill's Goliath Burger. She was able to do it in 17 minutes and 3 seconds, a new record. However, she wasn't done yet. Just a couple of months later, in November, she did it again, this time competing against the previous record holder, Randy Santel. She beat Santel and shattered her old record, eating the Goliath in 6 minutes and 43 seconds, inspiring Sinful Burger to change the name of its challenge wall to Molly's. Among other of her major foodie accomplishments, she successfully completed the Pig Wing Challenge in 38 minutes. That's five pounds of pig wings and three pounds of corn nuggets at Starsky's Bar and Grill. She also beat the Old River Pizza Company's Big Axe Calzone Challenge in 11 minutes and 23 seconds. That was eating a five pound calzone, which also set a new record. With Tyler Danforth, she polished off Big Joe's Pizza, a 12 pound pizza, in 28 minutes at Frank's Pizzeria. If you're still not impressed, she also completed the Nebraska Brewing Company's Death Pizza Challenge in 24 minutes and 56 seconds. This is a five-pound pizza slathered in lethal sauce made with ghost chili peppers, which according to the Guinness World Records book is the hottest chili pepper. For reference, it's about 400 times hotter than Tabasco sauce, rated at about 1 million Scoville heat units. Her time for this one was the record because no one had even tried it before. For completing this challenge, she was given the honor of naming the pie, which she called Molly's Humble Pie. She also set a record in Sailor's Old Country Kitchen's 72-ounce steak challenge, eating it in a mere 2 minutes and 44 seconds. So what was the old world record for a 72-ounce steak? 6 minutes and 38 seconds. So she crushed it. But this was all child's play compared to the Mad Greek Deli challenge at the Mad Greek Deli in Portland, Oregon. There, in a mere 54 minutes, she somehow managed to consume a 12-pound sandwich along with 1 pound of french fries and a large soda. For her efforts, she won $650. She's also also the only woman to have ever tried this. Then, even more remarkably, it was in January of 2014 when she set a new record on Sports Radio 94 WIP in Philadelphia, where she consumed 363 chicken wings, breaking the previous record held by famed competitive eater Takeru Kobayashi, which was 337 wings. She managed this feat in just 30 minutes, about one wing every five seconds. Her competitor that day was Patrick Bertoletti, who managed 356 wings. So close. For winning this one, she won $22,000. Just to get in the door to the exclusive event, Molly had to qualify by eating 9 pounds of cottage cheese, which she did in 1 minute and 54 seconds. She would later crush Patrick Bertoletti's hopes and dreams again by narrowly beating him at the Independence Burger Eating Contest in July of 2014, eating 26 quarter pounders in just 10 minutes, earning a cool $1,500. If you thought that was impressive, the very next day after winning the wing challenge, she entered IHOP's Pancake Bowl, where she consumed 56 pancakes and then 5 pounds of bacon. The day after that, she took the Adam Emenecker Challenge, her third time completing this one, which was eating a massive cheeseburger, which includes a spicy pickle, bun, pork tenderloin, buffalo chicken tenders, white cheddar sauce, fried cheese curds, a Texas brisket, applewood smoked bacon, and of course, the cheeseburger. Oh, and they also throw in a pound of waffle fries. 
To complete this challenge, you must eat all of that in under 15 minutes. Difficult for most, child's play for Molly. Given that she's done it three times, one assumes that it's a meal she genuinely likes. In May of 2014, she once again pushed the limits further in the Big Texan in Amarillo, Texas. Here, she consumed a 72-ounce steak, shrimp cocktail, baked potato, salad roll, and butter in 4 minutes and 58 seconds. And if you're not impressed with that, the previous record was held by Joey Chestnut, who did it all in 8 minutes and 52 seconds. Still not impressed? Well, to rub it in a bit more, she had seconds, managing to eat the full meal twice in just 14 minutes and 57 seconds. The list goes on and on and on. At this point, you might be wondering how she manages to keep her rather tiny figure. And she states, outside of these sorts of competitions, she mostly sticks with vegetables, salads without dressing, and trying to keep up with all of her kids. We competitive eaters don't eat like crazy all the time. That would just be impossible. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out another channel I do called Highlight History? I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.